Let's all stand tonight, and uh, we'll get into the book of Luke, chapter 19, and uh, read uh, about four verses here, found Luke chapter 19, verses 12 through 15. This is part three of the church in action. And I know when Jesus told his disciples, when uh, towards the uh, Mark chapter 16, there would be signs, wonders, there would be miracles. You know, he, he, those were some of those things that he began to point out of greater things that you're going to do than I did. And I know that God is not short on His power, power supply. Mm -hmm. I know tonight that God's miracles have not run out. They have not expired. Aren't you glad that there's no expiration on, his, on salvation or miracles or signs and wonders? I'm so glad that there's no exp expiration on healings. I'm so glad to know that there's no expiration on anything that we need from God, whether it's a financial, spiritual, or physical. The wells of salvation. Yes. Whatever we have need of tonight. Uh, Luke chapter 19. Starting verse 12, it says, and, there, and he said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he had called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. John chapter 20, verses 21 and 23 says, Then said Jesus to them, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever ye sends ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sends ye retain, are retained. Let's pray tonight. Oh, Hallelujah. Gracious Father, we're so thankful, Lord, for your blessings, for your spirit, for your anointing. Oh God, we just pray, oh Lord, tonight that your word would find a lodging place, Lord, empower us to be witnesses, to be that apostolic church in action. Hallelujah. We just give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, Jesus, just right before he ascended, he commanded his disciples to continue his work. His kingdom was to be built upon the earth, not as a liberal kingdom, but as a kingdom, a spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men and women today. Uh, Jesus didn't come to finish His work here, but He had established it, and He was going to, away to prepare another place, but while He was preparing this other place, He said He left these 12 disciples who became apostles to build a church. He wanted them to understand that uh, he was in order for him to loose himself 
so that he might be able to spread himself thicker, he was going to use these 12 men and the spirit within them to use others, that he would empower others. Uh, Jesus taught his disciples that they could not accomplish his work without the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, when Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and tarry until you're endued with power, He said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Power to be what? Witnesses. Power to give a testimony. Power to live above sin. Power to live in the face of conflicts. Hallelujah. From Jesus' instructions, it's apparent that the Holy Ghost is not just an added blessing or an optional blessing. It's something you can have if you want it, but you really don't need it to be saved. That's not what Jesus was saying. He said it was part of what you need to be overcomers. To be an effective witness, you must have my spirit. If it was going to be an optional blessing or something that they could have if they wanted, but they didn't want it, they didn't have to have it, you didn't need it, He would never have told them to go into, the, into Jerusalem and tarry until you are endued with it. Until right. yeah. the Spirit is poured out. Mm -hmm. Why would He command the twelve to go and tarry if it wasn't necessary? Why was there approximately 500 or so they estimated or guesstimated that was in the upper room at the beginning that was tearing for the Holy Ghost. But we see only and read about approximately 120 that stayed long enough to receive. Mm -hmm. But when Peter walked out from that upper room and he met the crowd below, oh, hallelujah! Bless the Lord. He was a different Peter. That's right. Yes. You see, they've been sent to do a work. The apostolic ministry is possible only when believers are empowered by the Holy Ghost. The job of proclaiming the gospel to the whole world has been placed upon our shoulders. It was placed upon theirs in the beginning. He took a handful and said, go to all the world and preach and teach, baptizing, yes. Yes. making converts, making disciples, building a church, establishing individuals upon the truth. And now today, the church of 2011, we're still mandated to do the same. The orders are there to go, preach, teach, and baptize. No one tonight, just because you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, and you've been baptized in that wonderful, precious name of Jesus, does not exempt you from testifying, from being a witness, from ministry. That burden is not just mine to share. But it's your responsibility as well. To be part of that apostolic church. To be the church in action. Everyone must be involved. The primary purpose of the gift is to empower believers for their life in Christ. To give them the power to share the call of Jesus Christ. The standard is not to measure up to the knowledge of the Apostle Paul or to uh, be the, have that boldness as the Apostle Peter. But God established a standard in each believer that's based on his or her talent and abilities. God does not empower you to send you out for a job without equipping you. Right. He doesn't send you out without giving you the the, without the proper skills and he knows each one of our own abilities yes, 
not only does the Holy Ghost set a person free from his past, but it also sets him free from unreasonable expectation regarding the future. You know, sometimes we feel like some things that's been asked of us seems to be unreasonable. But the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians, uh, he shared something. You know, when you think about, I'm sorry, it's not 1 Corinthians, it's Romans 12. Because our reasonable service, you know, God is not asking for our unreasonable service. That's right. So He's not making unreasonable mandates upon us. We see that God will judge believers by what they do with the gifts He has given them. Not how well they use those gifts or how He's going to compare Sister Rachel with Sister uh, Crystal. No, He's going to to bring us into accountability for what we've done as individuals. You know, I, I, the, the more I learn about averages, the more I dislike averages. Because when you begin to understand averages, they said, you know, 50% of this class was taken from 50% of this class and and then when you look at the total number that was surveyed or uh, that was put in for a job survey or whatever it is, they've already taken that opinion, that poll based on maybe a thousand people.